Well, hi everybody. How lovely it is to be able to join together again and to share something with you. And so thank you for joining me. I don't know if you're in collective worship. I don't even know if you're in school or whether maybe you're at home, learning at home at the moment. But how lovely to be able to share something and share um, something with my friend here because Frankie is back. I know some of you won't actually have seen Frankie before, I think. Uh, maybe some of you that started school in September. I'm not sure that Frankie's been in collective worship since then. So here's a wave. Okay, he's lovely. He likes to share with us and he likes to take part in collective worship. So lovely to be able to do that with him. Now, in church on Sunday, we thought about something in the life of Jesus that was really important. And we thought, we thought about his baptism. Now, baptism is a word that we use in the church and sometimes we use a different word for the same thing. And that word is christening. Now, just put your hand up in class if you're there at the moment and put up your hand if you know you've been christened. Well, some of you might not even know whether you've been christened or not because it's likely that you are quite small and tiny. You are a baby or just a little toddler and you can't remember anything about it. But what would have happened is that your mom, dad, whoever you live with, brought you to church and said, we want, we want to just have a special moment together in church with our family and our friends. And we'd like you to baptise or christen our child. And so they're always lovely and special occasions and really important occasions in everyone's life. Now, sometimes people aren't baptised as a baby, they're baptised as an adult and they're baptised in a way that Jesus was. Because Jesus wasn't baptised with a little sprinkling of water, Bab Jesus was baptised in a river and he will have been kind of put under the water and brought out again. Uh, very quickly, he wasn't going to drown or anything like that, but it was a symbol and a sign of something. And christening or baptism is a symbol or sign of something. It's a symbol or sign of a beginning or a new beginning. You know, at the beginning of our lives, we want to kind of mark that beginning and mark it in church. Somebody, a child has been born and that's a wonderful and really special thing. And so we want to just mark that together with family and friends and celebrate it. And so baptism marks a beginning. And for Jesus, it marked a beginning as well. It marked the beginning of his time on earth coming to teach people all about God. And baptism or a christening is about not only a beginning, but also saying we belong. And we belong to God, the Father, God, the Son and God, the Holy Spirit. And we belong to the whole family of God. And at Jesus' baptism, something quite special happened. As he came up out of the water, having been baptised, the Holy Spirit came and he heard God the Father saying to him, You are my son. I love you. They're really special words to hear, aren't they, when somebody says to you that they love you. And I always think about baptism. Is God saying to all of us as we're baptised, I love you. Now, what happens at a baptism? Well, the good news is that Frankie quite likes water. Um, he asked me earlier if he was going for a swim, but I don't think that's going to be possible in here. But during a baptism, what happens is the child is often just sprinkled with water. I say often because if, if you do get an adult, the adult is often baptised in a different way. Okay, but with a child, we just sprinkle the child with water and we say some words over that child and we make the sign of a cross on his or her forehead. So we do something like this. Are you ready, Frankie? You're looking forward to this, aren't you? You can't wait, can you? No, here we go. Right, so we ask the child to just bob, bob their head over like this. Okay, and we go, I baptise you in the name of the Father and in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Was that okay? And we make the sign of the cross on their forehead. 
And the sign of the cross is also a sign of God saying, I love you, you belong to me. Well, there's a baptism. And look what I've got here too. I've got a candle here too, because it's a baptism. We always present the child that's been baptised with a candle. Now, I know you all know what Jesus said about light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world, follow me. So we say to the child, take this light, the light of Christ, into the world and take it with you wherever you go and remember what God has done for you in Christ and remember to follow that light all your life. Isn't that lovely? Baptisms are really special occasions. Jesus' baptism was special too. In some ways, to start with, it was a bit odd because there was a man called John and John was a bit of a strange kind of character. He ate some kind of quite strange things and he lived in the wilderness and he was a bit of a loner. But he, he was a, a good man and he was a man that knew that Jesus was coming and that Jesus would change things in the world. And so he said to people, you have to get ready. You have to get ready for Jesus coming because God will send him and will send him to teach us all about the way that we should live. And then one day, as John was saying all these things, Jesus came. And Jesus said to him, I want you to baptise me. And John said, no, I can't possibly baptise you. And Jesus said, I need you to baptise me. And so Jesus was baptised. I'm going to tell you that story in the form of a bit of a poem and a rhyme. It's called Fill in All the Valleys. John lived in the wilderness. He was a sight to see. He dressed himself in camel skin and ate locusts for his tea. Get ready, was his message. Change your wicked ways, for God is sending someone who will leave you all amazed. Fill in all the valleys, knock the mountains down, straighten out the highways, God is coming to town. And then he told the people exactly what to do. Soldiers, don't be greedy, and tax collectors too, and all of you must help the poor, must give and play your part. Be baptised in the river as a sign of your new start. Fill in all the valleys, knock the mountains down, straighten out the highways, God is coming to town. Then Jesus, just as promised, walked right through the crowd. This is him, the Lamb of God, John called out clear and loud. Then Jesus asked to be baptised, but John did not agree. If anyone should baptise here, then you should baptise me. Fill in all the valleys, knock the mountains down, straighten out the highways, God is coming to town. It's what God wants, said Jesus. A good thing, says my father. So John did just as Jesus asked. And when he left the water, the Holy Spirit, like a dove, appeared on Jesus' head. Here is my beloved son. God's voice from heaven said. Fill in all the valleys, knock the mountains down, straighten out the highways. God is coming to town. Well, that's good news. The, good, the baptism of Jesus was good news. We need good news, not good news right now, don't we? We need things to celebrate. I'm sure there are things in our lives that we need to celebrate and give thanks for. Shall we do that? in a prayer. So shall we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of each other. We thank you for the gift of church. We thank you for the gift of baptism. We thank you for the gift of Jesus. And we thank you that he came to bring God's I love you to each one of us. And so Lord, as we go through our days, we just pray that will know your presence with us and will know your love for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. 
well, lovely to share some time together. Just 10 minutes of listening and sharing with Frankie. He's still a bit wet, so I need to get him towel down. Although he might want to just stick his nose in there in a moment because he does quite like water. But anyway, here we go. Have a lovely rest of the day, whatever you're doing. Take care, everybody. Stay safe. And hopefully I'll see you soon. God bless. Bye.